there are a number of people that say, well, I was forced into polygyny. I was forced to be here. I didn't choose polygyny. Polygyny chose me and I didn't like it. That could be true too. But if you chose to stay, you did choose polygyny. You chose your family and that's fine. That's okay. Assalamu alaikum, peace. It's your coach, Coach Nyla, one of the co-founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as co-author of the book, Let's Talk Polygamy Uncensored. Yes, in this video, we are going to discuss the choices we make in polygyny. And I'm going to talk more to the women in this, the wives, whether you're an initial wife or an additional wife or a potential wife. This is this video is for you. So stay take notes, do whatever you must, because this is a video for you, because it really doesn't matter what your timeline was or is in polygyny. We all have a choice when it comes to polygyny, whether it's to stay, whether it's to leave, whether it's to marry a person who's already married. Uh, of course, for the husbands in polygyny is to marry again when I'm already married. So those type of things like that. I'm not going to say that every decision, every choice is the same. I'm not going to say that it feels the same. I'm not going to say that every choice is easy because we'll have some women that say, well, the second wives or the incoming wives or the um, additional wives, if you will, have um, an easier choice. They chose to be in polygyny. They chose to marry in polygyny. That's correct. You're correct. The uh, additional wives, they did choose that. This is where the caveat comes in. I don't want to put the stinky butts out there, but when it all comes down to it, there's that butt or however, so to speak. And the however is, is that we all are adults and we all have a choice. We can choose to stay. Again, as I stated before, we could choose to leave. Yes, I'm not saying that the, the decision is an easy decision because there are a number of people that say, well, I was forced into polygyny. I was forced to be here. I didn't choose polygyny. Polygyny chose me and I didn't like it. That could be true too. But if you chose to stay, you did choose polygyny. You chose your family and that's fine. That's okay. You know, just as well as if an additional wife came in and she chose to marry a person who's already married, someone who already had a history, who has a history with his current wife, finding out where she fit in or where she belongs. And I know people say, well, that was her choice. That's a choice that she made. Same difference <laughs> as when an initial wife stays when her husband marries again. She had a choice to leave. Is it an easy choice? No. Is it an easy choice to stay? Most likely not, because there are a lot of different things that's going to change. There are a lot of different things that you may be used to that are not the same, that won't be the same. So now you have to have a new normal if you chose to stay. If you chose to leave as well, you have a new normal that you have to get used to. So am I saying the decisions are easy? No. Am I saying the choices are easy? No, I'm not. But the choices are still choices nonetheless. And when we come to terms with that, then we can be able to get out of the blame game and get out of my life is worse than yours or my marriage is worse than yours or how it came to be is worse than yours. And then we can say, you know what? How can we make the best out of this? Regardless of whatever decision you make regardless of whatever decision you make. Because the decision is not gonna always be easy. Think about this. If you had a job 
and you have to work a particular job and you didn't like this job or you didn't like the people in it, or you didn't like the boss. But see, this job pays the bills. And no, I'm not saying it's exactly the same because I know I have people in the comments saying, well, Coach Nyla, that's different. You know, the people at the job ain't sleeping with your husband. Come on, guys, let's stop that. Let's, let's not do that. We're adults here. We really have to start maturing and acting like adults. You know, I'm actually one of the coaches that is going to hold you accountable. Not saying that my, the other coaches aren't, because that's what we do at OPR. We make sure we hold you accountable. But I do call myself the accountability coach. And sometimes people don't like the things that I have to say. People are quick to say that I don't understand because I am an additional wife. But see, I was a coach before I was an additional wife. I was a single mother before I was an additional wife. I was a married woman in monogamy before I was an additional wife. I was a woman who was cheated on before I was an additional wife. So I have a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, information to give and a lot of ways to help other people go through and grow through the challenges that they have. I had to put that out there because I will get that. I've gotten it over the years. And regardless of people understand it or not, it's what it is. Because in order for me to be the person that I am, for people to under or for people to look at me and say, well, you you don't understand. Maybe when your husband marries again, then you will really understand. That just goes to show that you really don't understand what people go through and that people can still um, have empathy and sympathy and understanding, even if they didn't go um, into that type of situation exactly like another person. I am Coach Nadir. And I'm Coach Fatima, his wife. And I am Coach Nyla. I am also his wife. We are the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as the authors of the book, Let's, Let's Talk Polygamy Uncensored. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, how can you get your hands on a copy of it right now? The great part is, we're about to share that with you. But first, let me tell you about why you need to at least get your hands on one or maybe more copies, depending on where you are in your polygynous journey. Some of the things that we discuss in our book is, are issues about trust, insecurities, jealousy among wives, and maybe even, possibly even, creating lasting friendships. Especially friendships amongst co-wives. And we share in this book how you can understand that it takes a village, that polygyny is not some taboo topic or something that's gonna leave women stranded alone and kids not loving each other or feel like they're left alone by their fathers or from their fathers or whatever the case may be. You will learn so much in this book. Let's talk polygamy uncensored. Indeed, we lay down the practical steps that we wish we would have when we started our polygamy journey over 13 years ago. Well, the time is here and all you have to do, go to letstalkpolygamy.com. Order a copy, order the bundle, do whatever it is you need to do so there's no more excuses and we make it marriage great again by reminding people of polygamy, which is an ancient solution to, to a modern, modern day, day problem. problem. <laughs> Let's talk polygamy.com. Get your pre-sale order on. With that being said, make sure you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every, every single day. day. <laughs> Mr. Link, Salaam Alaikum. Peace. Peace. Even though you may not know the whole ins and outs of their lives and what they went through, these people know. Well, and I'm going to say I do and I understand. However, in order for me to be the person that I am today, I had to become confident. I had to become responsible for what I decide. I had to stop pointing fingers and placing blame. And I teach others to do the same. In order to have that confident life as a confident wife, whether you're a monogamy or polygyny, it comes to terms that you have to come to terms with being an adult, being mature. I'm not saying that the feelings aren't there. I'm not saying that the challenges aren't there. I'm not saying that the hurt is not there. Betrayal or whatever the case may be. There'll be a number of things. It's not all cookie cutter. And I'm not dismissing anyone's feelings or their experiences. However, how we deal with those feelings and how we deal with those experiences, that's what matter. 
And we have to stop saying that only one person or two people or whatever the case may be have choices in the matter when we all do. We may not arrive to those choices at the same. I mean, we may not arrive at those choices the same way. And they may not even be the same choices, but we all have a choice and we have to understand that. When we understand that and we put on our big girl panties and say, you know what? This is a choice that I made. This is the decision I'm gonna sit in and I'm gonna make it work, regardless of what it is. I'm not gonna point blame. I'm not gonna manipulate. I'm gonna be an adult in the matter and I'm gonna sit in my decision and I'm going to do the things I must do to make it work. So whether that gets, whether that is to get counseling, coaching, whether that is to take a class or different courses, whatever that is for you to heal, for you to get better, for you to grow, so be it. And we have those things within OPR within our suite of products, within our coaching programs and all that other good stuff. Even if you don't go with us, I would suggest that you do get assistance, whether it's from a self-help book, whether it's from a personal development book, whether it's from a different type of course, whatever it may be. But we, first and foremost, we have to look inside ourselves or look in that mirror and say, is this benefiting me? Is the way that I'm behaving, is the thoughts that I'm having or are the thoughts that I'm having beneficial to me, beneficial to my family? Make the decision, make the choice and sit in it and grow. That's the only way you're gonna have success is if you are holding yourself accountable, you're being self-aware and you work on consistent growth. And we have to do that. In order for us to be confident wives, whether you're an initial or additional or a potential, that's what it's about. It's about your constant, never ending improvement and being self aware enough to understand that that's important and to work on yourself better and more than you work on anything else because everything will start to fall into place then. Hope you guys got some very good information from this video. Of course, like I stated before, it's not, everything I say is not going to be as harsh. I don't know if that you even consider this harsh, but sometimes I am very direct when it comes to how I speak because I really believe that in order for us to get better, we need someone that's gonna tell us the real and tell us the truth about the things and not coddle our bad behavior. You know, I'm glad that I've had people in my corner that let me know when I was adding, excuse me, when I was acting like a toddler, when I was acting like a baby, when I was pointing blame instead of taking responsibility. And I teach my children to do the same. So, and I lead by example. I know that may not sit well with a lot of people because we're in a place where shaming is being shamed. And sometimes we need to shame so we can hold that mirror up and see that what we're doing is not right, that what we're doing is wrong and what we're doing is manipulative and is not beneficial for ourselves, our family, and those around us. Again, hope you got some great information. If you like this content, make sure you share because sharing is caring. Make sure you join us on our social media channels. If you have not already, um, it'll be in the description or you probably can see it, you know, probably pop up on the screen. And until next time, make sure you're growing intentionally, loving fearlessly and connecting on a higher level every single day. Here's your coach, Coach Nyla, and I'll see you soon. Inshallah, God willing. Assalamu alaikum.